Hello, welcome along then. I hope you're well. Uh, we're a couple of minutes early in the virtual village hall. Hope your day's going well. I'm Dave. I'll be looking after the questions and more importantly the answers for today. There's a lot to get through. I know I'm a couple of minutes early. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to suggest that maybe you get some pens and papers together so that uh, you've got the facility to write the answers down. I'd normally suggest no phones if we were at a quiz, but of course you do need your phone, particularly if that's the only way you can get onto uh, the virtual village hall page. So as I say, a lot to get through today. I hope you enjoyed it last time. The format today is pretty much the same. There's going to be six rounds. There's going to be a general knowledge round, and then we'll have some themed round as well. What I would suggest to you is if you don't know any of the answers to any of the questions, write the question down on your piece of paper. And that way uh, you can come back to it. We'll be doing the first three rounds. I'm going to do those in order. And then what we're going to do, we're going to have a break. I'll go through the answers and then we'll have the following three rounds. And I'll do the answers for those three at the end as well. OK, so I'll just give you a couple of minutes then just to get yourselves together because I was a bit keen to get on. So I think we're about two minutes uh, before three o'clock. I hope you're well and uh, say a uh, very good afternoon to uh, Julie, Sophia and Mick and Sandra as well. I hope you've got your brains in gear. Um, if you have any comments, please pop them up on the comments section. But what I will ask you, please don't put any answers on the comments. Otherwise, everybody will know them. Well, that's assuming you've got it right, of course. So, as I say, lots to get through today. There'll be six rounds. Now, the first round will be general knowledge. That's the first round today. OK, after that, there are five themed rounds. And the rounds today are 1990s movies. That'll be the second round. Lots of movies to choose from. I've chosen some really well-known films. So some of them you'll have seen. You'll have definitely have heard of them. And we'll be revisiting some of those. After that, we'll have a mystery round. I'll explain more about the mystery round when we get there. Round number four will be all about the word only. Now, these are going to be questions on something that may have only happened once, or it may have happened, um, well, just once, or it might be a play on the word only, or it might be the only one of its kind. I'll explain more when we get there. Round number five is all about English towns and cities, where the answers will be an English town or a city. And finally, this afternoon, we'll wrap it all up. Round number six, things you can eat. So, where are we? We are approaching time. We're there. So we're going to make a start then, right here and right now. Round number one then, it's all about general knowledge. So question number one this afternoon, which car company makes the Qashqai car? Qashqai, Q-A-S-H-Q-A-I. Please don't pop the answers on the screen, write them down on your piece of paper. And just a reminder, though, if you have um, a question that you're not sure of, just write it down on your bit of paper and you can come back to it. We'll do the first three rounds and then we'll have uh, this following three rounds after we've done the answers to the first three. So question number one, then, on round number one was general knowledge. Which car company makes the cash kai? Just while you're writing that down, just say hello to Angela and Jeff as well. I hope your afternoon is going. Question number two on general knowledge. Which chain of stores was founded by Richard Block and David Quayle in Southampton in 1969? Now, this is a big range of stores. There's stores in virtually every town or city. They've got one in most towns. Uh, you'll probably be, have been in many of them over the years. They're still trading today. So which chain of stores was founded by Richard Block and David Quayle in Southampton in 1969. I've spent a lot of money in those shops lately. I won't tell you why just yet, because you'll know what type of store it is. Question number three on general knowledge. What is the maximum score possible in a game of 10-pin bowling? So what is the maximum score possible in a game of 10-pin bowling? Now, I do like going bowling. If I get any halfway towards this maximum score, I think I've had a marvellous afternoon. Never get more than halfway towards the maximum. But what is that maximum score possible in a game of 10-pin bowling? 
Are you one of those people who likes to play with the bumpers up? I must be honest, I prefer the bumpers down, even if the ball goes down the gully. Well, it doesn't really matter. So that was question number three. Question number four on general knowledge. Carol Decker was the lead singer of which group who had a 1987 number one hit in the UK with the song China In Your Hand? Now, this group also shared their name with a character from the original Star Trek television series. But which group was it? 1987 it was. It was a big, big hit record. One of the biggest ones of that year. Uh, the group was led by Carol Decker. But what is the name of the group? And while you're thinking about that, hello to Anne-Marie. Anne-Marie, nice to have you with us this afternoon. Question number five on general knowledge. What is the phonetic international word for the letter J? So you have uh, phonetic words, don't you? You've got A for Alpha, B for Bravo, C for Charlie. But what is the international phonetic word for the letter J? Very good afternoon to everybody at the Royal Voluntary Services. I hope your afternoon is going well. Thank you for your message there. Nice to hear from you. So what is the international phonetic word for the letter J? Question number six. On a standard Monopoly board, which square would you find between Vine Street and Strand? I do like my Monopoly. If you were with me last time, um, you'll know I did a couple of Monopoly questions. So this is the only one today. So on a standard Monopoly board, which square is between Vine Street and the Strand? Keep those comments coming in. Thank you, Jeff. Yep, you like your Star Trek. I hope you've got that Carol Decker one then. So on a standard Monopoly board, which square is between Vine Street and the Strand? We're off to the movies for question number seven on this general knowledge round. Which serpent did Harry Potter destroy in the Chamber of Secrets? So which serpent did Harry Potter destroy in the Chamber of Secrets? It's a good film. I do like my Harry Potter. I remember queuing up when my kids were small at midnight. Did you do that when the books came out? Because they were only published on a certain day, weren't they? And many a time we queued up for the latter books at midnight outside various high street stores. So question number seven then, which serpent did Harry Potter destroy in the Chamber of Secrets? Hello to Anne Morris. Hello, how are you? Thank you for your nice comments there. I'm glad you could join me again. So question number eight then on general knowledge. Which well-known brand of jeans is an anagram of the first name of the king of rock and roll? So which well-known brand of jeans is an anagram of the first name of the king of rock and roll? Very popular brand of jeans. So we're looking for that brand of jeans. It's an anagram of the first name of the king of rock and roll. Don't forget, if you're not sure of any of these answers, write them down in your answer sheet because you can come back to it in a little while. If you get another answer straight away, you can think about it. We'll do the answers for the first three rounds when we've got through the first three rounds. Normally on a quiz, you do them after each round, but not today. We're going to do the first three rounds and then we're going to do the answers. So you'll have plenty of time uh, to think about some that you might not have got. So just to recap on question eight, which well-known brand of jeans is an anagram of the first name of the king of rock and roll? Question number nine. What is the first name? Oh, this will take you right back, this one. And if you were, uh, when you were a child, you'll have watched this uh, programme on the telly, or maybe you've got kids of your own. They'll, they'll have watched this over the years. What is the first name of the female teenager in the Scooby-Doo television series who does not wear glasses? So what is the first name of the female teenager in the Scooby-Doo television series who does not wear glasses? 
He's great Scooby, wasn't he? Fabulous. He's still good now, actually, to be fair. So what is the first name of the female teenager in the Scooby-Doo television series who does not wear glasses? So that was question number nine on general knowledge. And question number 10, finishing off this round, what is St. Stephen's Day more commonly known as? We celebrate it every year. St. Stephen's Day, what do we normally call it? A lot of people call it St. Stephen's Day, but it has another name as well. What do we normally call St. Stephen's Day? Well, I hope you're doing well with these answers. If so, that's really good. If not, don't worry, there's still five rounds to go. So that was your general knowledge round. So now we're going to make a start on the first of the themed rounds this afternoon. And the first of the themed rounds is 1990s movies. Now, these are all really big films from the 1990s. So question number one, I really, really hope they're going to bring back some memories for you. Question number one on your 1990s movies. In which film does Whoopi Goldberg play Oda Mae Brown, Patrick Swayze play Sam Wheat, and Demi Moore play Molly Jensen. So in which film does Whoopi Goldberg play Oda Mae Brown, Patrick Swayze play Sam Wheat, and Demi Moore play Molly Jensen? Big film, big song that went with it as well, as indeed lots and lots of uh, big films from the 90s. They did have lots of big theme tunes. So question number two on your 1990s movies. What were the agent names of Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones in The Men in Black? So what were the agent names of Will Smith, Tommy Lee Jones in Men in Black? You don't have to get them in the right order. It doesn't matter. As long as you get them down, so... Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones were agent something and agent something else. Lots of good films to choose from from the 1990s. I hope these are bringing back good memories for you. Question number three. Now this one, this film is on the telly an awful lot of late. In which film does Edward, played by Richard Gere, hire Vivian played by Julia Roberts, to accompany him to a few social events. So, in which film does Edward, played by Richard Gere, hire Vivian, played by Julia Roberts, to accompany him to a few social events? Good film. I really like that one. Mind you, they're all pretty good, to be fair. Number four on 1990s movies. What is the surname of Jack, the character played by Leonardo DiCaprio in the film Titanic? So what is the surname of Jack, the character played by Leonardo DiCaprio in the film Titanic? I really like that. Again, I, I know I've said it before, but I really like that film. Good, good film. Lots of awards. I'm not surprised as well. So we're looking for the surname of Jack, the character played by Leonardo DiCaprio in Titanic. Question number five. Now, this was a crazy film, this one. In which film does a woman leave a briefcase in an airport terminal where a daft limousine driver and his even dafter friend set out on a road trip to Aspen to return it to her. Now, this stars Jim Carrey. I hope that's how you pronounce his name. I never know if it's Jim Carrey or Jim Carrey. I'm going to go for Carrey. And Jeff Daniels. So in which film does a woman leave a briefcase in an airport terminal where a daft limo driver and his even dafter friend set out on a road trip to Aspen to return it? Starring Jim Carrey and Jeff Daniels. Hey, 
had a very distinctive car, that one. Well, van. Question number six. Now, this is a film I haven't seen, to be honest. Never got round to seeing this one, but it's a well-known phrase by the character. So, question number six. On 1990s movies, which character says life is like a box of chocolates? Very famous quote from a very famous film. Which character said life is like a box of chocolates? Yeah, I'll have to get round to seeing that. As I never, never managed to watch it. And it's only been 25 years, 26 years. I'll get round to it sooner or later. Question number seven on your 1990s movies. In which live action animated film would you find the Nerd Lux, a criminal alien group led by Mr. Schwackhammer? So in which live action and animated film would you find the Nerd Lux? A criminal alien group led by Mr. Schwackhammer. It's a good film, this one. Unusual star in it as well. I'm sure you'll know it when uh, we go through the answers fairly soon. Mr. Schwackhammer. Question number eight. Which film do the following lyrics come from in its main title theme? Don't tell me. It's not worth trying for. You can't tell me it's not worth dying for. You know it's true. Everything I do, I do it for you. So I'd like to know the name of that film, please, where those lyrics come from. It's the main title theme. So don't tell me it's not worth trying for. You can't tell me it's not worth dying for. You know it's true. Everything I do, I do it for you. Big, big song. Big, big film as well. So that was question number eight. Question number nine on your 90s movies. In the film The Bodyguard, Whitney Houston played the star, but who played the bodyguard? Frank Farmer was his name. So in The Bodyguard, Whitney Houston played the star, but who played her bodyguard, Frank Farmer? Again, really, really big songs from these films. I Will Always Love You, that was the big one from this film, Whitney Houston. So, Whitney Houston did play the star, but who played the bodyguard? Frank Farmer. And question number 10 on your 1990s movies. In which film would you find a divorced actor called Daniel his ex-wife Miranda, and an elderly Scottish housekeeper, a woman who is not all she seems. So in which film would you find a divorced actor called Daniel, his ex-wife Miranda, and an elderly Scottish housekeeper who isn't quite the woman that she seems? Very popular film. I must be honest, it's, uh, it's not one of my favourites, but it's so popular. I'm sure you'll have seen it or heard of it. So, once again, if there's anything that you're not sure of, I hope you've written your questions down on your answer sheet so that you can think about it, maybe, while we're doing this round as well. As I said earlier, we're going to do three rounds, and then we're going to mark the first three rounds, and then we'll do the last three and mark those. So, question number three. And now this is the mystery round. Now, with your mystery round, once again, it's a themed round. There is a link to all the answers, but I'm not going to tell you what that link is because that's going to be answer number 10. And one thing I really like about the theme, the mystery round is when you get to about four or five questions and you work out what the link is, if there's any that you haven't got, you might be able to work it backwards. So make sure you write those answers, those questions down to any you haven't got. So question number one on this mystery round. What did Scott, Virgil, Alan, Gordon and John, first pilot in the 1960s on the telly and it's still going strong today. So what did Scott, Virgil, Alan, Gordon and John first pilot in the 1960s on the telly and still going strong today? 
Very, very popular program. Kids still love it today. I enjoyed it very much when I was a youngster. I, think, I still think it's pretty clever, way ahead of its time back in the 1960s. Question number two. Which three-letter word is put into a list of contacts in the phone directory of a mobile phone so that if the owner of the phone has an accident, this particular person, their next of kin, can be contacted? So which three-letter word is put into the list of contacts in the phone directory of a mobile phone for someone to contact if the owner of the phone has had an accident? Don't forget, this is a mystery round. And once you start to get a feel of what the mystery, what the link is, you might be able to work some of the questions back. So question number three on this mystery round. What was the nickname of the snooker player, Alex Higgins? I think he's been retired a while, hasn't he, as uh, Alex? But what was the nickname of the snooker player, Alex Higgins? Question number four will be here in just a moment. Well, you might as well have it now, actually. Which television detective in a series which ran from 1992 to 2010 is based in a place called Denton and the detective is played by David Jason. So which television detective in a series which ran from 1992 to 2010 is based in Denton and is played by David Jason. So I'm hoping that you may have got the link by now. Don't pop it on the screen though if you have it because that will be the answer to question number 10. So number five on this mystery round. What is the first name of the character in a British soap opera who has married many, many times and has had surnames including Potter, Tilsley, Platt, McIntyre, Hillman and Rodwell and is played by the actress Helen Worth. So... That was a long one, wasn't it? But we'll do it again. What is the first name of the character in a British soap who had married so many times she's had lots of surnames including Potter, Tilsley, Platt, McIntyre, Hillman and Rodwell and is played by the actress Helen Worth. It's a soap which has been on many, many years. Question number six on this mystery round. Which game, first seen here in the UK in 1966, played at parties, consists of a large mat covered in lots of different coloured circles, has a separate square board with a spinning arrow on it? So which game, first seen in 1966, consists of a large mat covered in different coloured circles and has a separate square board with a spinning arrow on it? I'm sure you'll have played this many times. I think I'm still suffering from my last attempt, my last game, which was a long time ago. So question number seven then on this mystery round. I'd like to know who was born in Dublin on the 20th of April 1938 and is a well-known television broadcaster, journalist and a historian He's appeared on ITN, but more usually on the BBC, and is best known for his election night swingometer. Where will you be without that swingometer every few years? So he was born in Dublin on the 20th of April 1938, is a well known television broadcaster, journalist, and a historian. He's appeared on ITN, but more commonly on the BBC, and is best known for his election night swingometer. Very good afternoon, Stacey. I'm glad you're enjoying the quiz this afternoon. Nice to have you with us. So question number eight. Which 1980 John Carpenter film starring Jamie Lee Curtis and Hal Holbrook is set in the fictional town in America of Antonio Bay, which is just about to celebrate its centenary when paranormal activity in the form of pirates starts to occur? 
quite a good atmospheric film, this one. So it's a 1980 John Carpenter film. He's made some good films, hasn't he, over the years. Normally horror films, John Carpenter. It stars Jamie Lee Curtis and Hal Holbrook. It's set in the American fictional town of Antonio Bay, which is just about to celebrate its centenary when paranormal activity in the form of pirates starts to occur. I'm wondering if you've got that link yet. Please don't put it on the comments. Right, now this one's probably the oldest question so far today. Which tree was in the title of a song by the Peddlers? Who's the Peddlers, I hear you ask? Well, they were a folk group back in the 1960s and 70s. So which tree was in the title of a song by the Peddlers and was used as the theme song for a programme on ITV called Follyfoot? And that was shown in 1973. Follyfoot was a horse. So... The tree, it's in the name of the title of the song by the Peddlers, and it was also used as the theme song for the Follyfoot television show back in 1973. I'd have been 14 there. You can do the maths for yourself. So Follyfoot then, what was the theme? What tree was in the theme for the programme? And question number 10, what is the link of all these answers? They've got a common link. I'll just give you a few moments to go back through your answers. I'm going to do the answers momentarily. However, if there are any blanks on your paper, just put anything down. It doesn't matter. No one will know if you've got them wrong. It doesn't matter. As long as you're enjoying it, that's the main thing. So when I go to quizzes, I, I never like to send my quiz, my answer sheet back with, uh, with empty spaces because you never know, you might just get it right. So let's go way back then to round number one. Let's mark them up. They get one point for each answer. I asked you, which car company makes the Qashqai? Well, that's Nissan. They make the Qashqai. And question number two, which chain of stores was founded by Richard Block and David Quayle in Southampton in 1969? Well, you've got B for Block and Q for Quayle. So that's B and Q. Question number three. The maximum score possible in a game of 10-pin bowling is 300. As if. <laughs> It'd be lovely, wouldn't it, if you could get that. Question number four. Carol Decker was that lead singer of which group who had a 1987 number one hit with China in your hand? And the group also shared its name with a character in the Star Trek original series. Well, that was Tapao. Tapao was some kind of distant relative of Mr. Spock, if memory serves me correctly. Question number five, I asked you what the international phonetic word for the letter J is. Well, that's Juliet. That square between Vine Street and Strand on Monopoly board is free parking. Number seven, I asked you which serpent Harry Potter destroyed in the Chamber of Secrets. Well, that is the basilisk. It's quite fearsome, wasn't it, the basilisk? I did enjoy that film. Well, I enjoyed all the Harry Potters, to be fair. Number eight, which well-known brand of jeans is an anagram of the first name of the king of rock and roll? Well, the king of rock and roll is Elvis. So if you rearrange the letters in his name, you get Levi's. Question number nine, what is the first name of the female teenager in the Scooby-Doo television series who doesn't wear glasses? Well, if you put Velma, you wouldn't be right, I'm afraid, because it's Daphne. Daphne. I knew you would have got that if it hadn't have been for those pesky kids. And question number 10, what is St. Stephen's Day more commonly known as? Well, that's Boxing Day, 26th of December. Then we moved on to round number two, which is all about 1990s movies. I asked you, which film did Whoopi Goldberg play Oda Mae Brown? Patrick Swayze play Sam Wheaton, Demi Moore play Molly Jensen. Well, that was Ghost. Number two, I asked you the agent names of Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones in Men in Black. Well, that was J and K. Doesn't matter whether you've gotten the wrong way around. And number three, in which film does Edward, played by Richard Gere, hire Vivian, played by Julia Roberts, to accompany him to a few social events? Pretty Woman. Number four, the surname of Jack, played by Leonardo DiCaprio in Titanic. Well, it's Jack Dawson. Dawson is the answer. And that film, Madcap film number five, where a woman leaves a briefcase in an airport terminal where a daft limo driver and his even dafter mate uh, set off on a road trip to Aspen to return. It's starring Jim Carrey and Jeff Daniels. Well, that was Dumb and Dumber. I think they had that van, didn't they, with the big ears on, if I remember correctly. I'm sure they did. 
Number six, which character said, life is like a box of chocolates. Well, that's Forrest Gump. And number seven, that live action animated film where you will find the Nerdlux, a criminal group led by Mr. Schwackhammer. Well, that was Space Jam. It was great, that film. I really like it with Michael Jordan, Bugs Bunny and all the rest of the Looney Tunes. Great stuff. Number eight, which film do the following lyrics come from in its main title theme? Don't tell me it's not worth trying for. You can't tell me it's not worth dying for. You know it's true. Everything I do, I do it for you. That is Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Number nine, uh, I asked you about the Bodyguard movie starring Whitney Houston, who played the star. But who played the bodyguard, Frank Farmer? Well, that was Kevin Costner. And number 10, in which film would you find a divorced actor called Daniel, his ex-wife Miranda, and an elderly Scottish housekeeper, a woman who isn't quite all she seems? Well, that is Mrs Doubtfire. Very, very popular film from the 1990s, as indeed they all were. Then we got on to the mystery round, and this was the round where I didn't tell you what the theme was, I wanted you to work it out. So, number one, what did Scott... Virgil, Alan, Gordon and John, first pilot in the 1960s, still on the, on the telly today, still very popular. Well, that is Thunderbirds. Number two, which three-letter word is put into the list of contacts in the phone directory of a mobile phone for someone to contact if the owner of the phone has had an accident? I-C-E, ICE, in case of emergency. Number three, what was the nickname of the snooker player Alex Higgins? Well, he played so quickly, he was called the Hurricane. Hurricane Higgins. Number four, which television detective in a series which ran from 1992 to 2010, based in the place called Denton, is played by David Jason? Well, that is Jack Frost. Good actor, that David Jason, as you know. Number five, I asked you for the first name of the character in a British soap opera who has married many times and had all those surnames, Potter, Tilsley, Platt, McIntyre, Hillman and Rodwell, played by Helen Worth, that is Gail. Number six, which game first seen in 1966 contains of a large map covered in, in circles, lots of different colour circles, has a separate square board with a spinning arrow on it, well that is Twister. If you've played it, you'll know it. Number seven, who was born in Dublin on the 20th of April, way back in 1938, famous for his election night swingometer? That is Peter Snow. Number eight, which 1980 John Carpenter film starring Jamie Lee Curtis and Hal Holbrook is set in that fictitious town of Antonio Bay? That is The Fog. Number nine, that tree uh, was used in the Follyfoot theme, it was a hit for the peddlers, was The Lightning Tree. And number 10, what is the link for all the answers? Well, the link I was looking for were thunder, ice, hurricane, frost, gale, twister, snow, fog and lightning. So all types of weather. So just types of weather. So how are you getting on? Let me know. I'll be uh, pleased to hear from you this afternoon. One point for each answer. So now we come to round number four. We'll do the next three rounds, the last three rounds, and I'll give you the answers at the end. So this is all about the word only. So it may be the only time that something's happened. It may be the only one of its kind, or it might just be a play on the word only. So here we go. Question number one on the word only. Nicholas Breakspear is the only British person to hold which high office? So Nicholas Breakspear is the only British person to hold which high office? There's been plenty of people who have held this office, but Nicholas Breakspear is the only British person to have done so. It was a long, long time ago. Question number two. Hopefully this will bring back some great memories for you. Who was the only female Womble to appear in a television series? So there was more than one in the books, but only one of them made it onto the small screen. So who was the only female Womble to appear in the television series? They were good, the Wombles, weren't they? Environmentally friendly, years ahead of their time. Question number three. From which television's theme tune, sorry, let me try that again. From which television show's theme tune do the following lyrics come from? 
stick a pony in me pocket, I'll fetch the suitcase from the van, because if you want the best ones, but you don't ask questions, then brother, I'm your man. I can't think of anybody who will not have seen at least one episode of this long, long running programme on the telly. So from which television show's theme tune do the following lyrics come from? Stick a pony in me pocket, I'll get the suitcase from the van, because if you want the best ones, but you don't ask questions, then brother, I'm your man. Question number four on the word only. Which is the only river in the world that runs through four capital cities? There's only one that does it. So the only river in the world that runs through four capital cities. This is one river I really want to go on. So it's the only river in the world that runs through four capital cities. I've got to do a cruise on this river. I've really got to do it. It actually flows through 10 countries as well, but it's the only one in the world that flows through four capital cities. But what is it? Question number five, on only. For the only time in its history, and it happened in 1969, France, Spain, the Netherlands and the UK were joint winners of which competition? So for the only time in its history, and it happened in 1969, France, Spain, the Netherlands and the UK were joint winners of which competition? It's one competition I don't like missing. I did miss it this year, it wasn't on. Uh, but hopefully it'll be back next year. So question number six on the word only. In Greek mythology, when Pandora opened the box and all the evils and illnesses came out, what was the only thing that stayed inside? I did like my Greek mythology. I, I really, really uh, did when I was younger. So in Greek mythology, when Pandora opened the box and all the evils of the world and all the illnesses came out, what was the only thing that was left inside the box? How are you getting on? I hope you're doing well. Nice to have you with me today. Let's move on then. Question number seven on the word only. Which company had television commercials which had the following tagline as their slogan? Only blank can do this as it reaches the parts other beers cannot reach. Only blank can do this as it reaches the parts other beers cannot reach. So what is the blank please? It's quite an extensive advertising campaign they had at the time. Went on for many, many years. Only blank can do this as it reaches the parts other beers cannot reach. We've moved on to question number eight on the word only. Please complete the title of this Roy Orbison hit song. Only the blank. So Roy Orbison, the big O, he had some big hit records, didn't he? Only the blank is the one I'm looking for this time. Moving on. Question number nine. What is the only city in the world that sits on two continents? There's only one that does it. So the only city in the world that sits on two continents. And question number 10, on the word only, who was the only British monarch in the 20th century to abdicate the throne? Who was the only British monarch in the 20th century to abdicate the throne? Only one of them did it, but who was it? And that wraps up your, your round on the word only. I hope you've written some questions down. If you haven't got the answer, I hope you've written it down because you can come back to it before we go through the answers. So we've reached round number five, English towns and cities. So all the answers have an English town or city. Simple as that. So question number one on English towns and cities, which actor played Dirty Den in EastEnders? Which actor played Dirty Den in EastEnders? Those were the days, weren't they? 
I, I must confess, I haven't watched it for a long, long time, but I, I used to quite enjoy it when uh, Dan and Ange were on. Great times. So who played Dirty Den in EastEnders? Question number two on English towns and cities. Which American president was assassinated in 1865? Which American president was assassinated in 1865? Now, this is a long question, question number three, so bear with me on this one. Which grass-grown crop is a member of the wheat family and is closely related to barley? Its grain is used for flour, bread, beer and crisp breads and occasionally used in making whiskey. So which grass-grown crop is a member of the wheat family and is closely related to barley? Its grain is used for making flour, bread, beer and crisp breads and also making some whiskies as well. So remember the theme of the round is English towns and cities. On we go, question number four. What's the name given to the slope on a road that starts in the middle of the road and slopes down towards the gutter to let the rain run down towards the drains on either side? So on a road it's higher in the middle, then it slopes down towards the curbs on either side to allow that rain to run off so it doesn't pond over the road. What name is given to the slope, the slopey bit? Okay, once again, think of the theme of the round, English towns and cities. And I think question number five, it is, it's uh, the oldest question. Uh, we're gonna go back further on this one. Question number five on English towns and cities. Which DJ played the very first record on Radio 1 when it was launched way back in 1967? So which DJ played the very first record played on Radio 1 when it was launched way back in 1967? So what's that, 53 years by my reckoning? Crikey. Yeah, 53 years, Radio 1. Mm -hmm. But who played the very first record? Question number six. Now, this will be handy if you're actually living in this place at the moment. What is the only place in England that has an exclamation mark in its name? So it's the name of a place in England, but it's got an exclamation mark at the end of its name. What is it? There's only one. I'll give you a clue on this one. It is down south towards the south of England. So what's well, the only place in England that has an exclamation mark in its name? Moving on, question number seven. Opened in 1840 and still operating today, which city is home to Temple Meads Railway Station? It's a big terminus on the railway network, but where is it? Which, which uh, city is it in? So it was opened in 1840, still operating today. Which city is home to Temple Meads Railway Station? Moving on, question number eight. From which English city did the Titanic leave on her only voyage? Oh, it's a second Titanic question today, isn't it? Yeah, I hadn't realised that. From which English city did the Titanic leave on her only voyage? Question number nine, pop music question this time. Which American singer had UK hit songs with the following Circle in the Sand and We Want the Same Thing? So which American singer had UK hit, sing, hit, hit records with Circle in the Sand and We Want the Same Thing? Just bear in mind the name of the round, theme of the round, English towns and cities. Very popular American singer. Circle in the Sand, We Want the Same Thing. Who sang them? And question number 10. What name is given to a football match that involves two teams playing each other from the same city? So what name is given to a football match that involves two teams playing each other 
from the same city. So those are your English towns and cities. That is round number five, which leads us quite nicely into round number six, things you can eat. I always save the best till last. I'm rather partial to a bit of food. So question number one, which seafood is also the name of a ticket on the London Underground system? If you've been, to, been on the London Underground, you'll have used these many times. So which seafood is also the name of a ticket on the London Underground system? Question number two, things you can eat. Cavendish, Saba, I'll spell that for you because I'm not sure whether it's uh, whether I pronounced it correctly, S-A-B-A. -A. So Saba or Saba or Saba and Ladyfinger are types of which fruit? So Cavendish, Saba, and Ladyfinger are all types of which fruit? Question number three. On things you can eat. Opened in 2003, this uniquely shaped building in London is officially called 30 St Mary Axe. But what's its nickname? What do we know it as? You see it on the telly when, uh, for instance, financial reporters are reporting from the City of London. They're quite often in this building. So what's it more commonly known as? Its official title is 30 St Mary Axe. It's a very unusual design. It's the only one of its kind. What is its nickname? Found in the City of London the Financial District. Question number four on things you can eat. What name is given to the amount of money put down as a bet? So what name is given to the amount of money put down as a bet? Question number five, things you can eat. Philo, I'm not sure whether I pronounced that correctly either, or Philo, I'll spell it for you anyway, so you know. F-I-L-O, shoe, puff, and flaky are all types of what? So phyllo, I'll go with that. Shoe, puff and flaky are all types of what? That was question five. Question number six on things you can eat. Winston Churchill's wife shares her first name with which fruit? So Winston Churchill's wife shares her first name with which fruit? Number seven. Which type of beret was Prince singing about on his 1980s hit single? So which type of beret was Prince singing about on his 1980s hit single? He was still called Prince in those days. He hadn't thought about it for a while and he wasn't the former artist. He was still Prince uh, though in those days. So what type of beret was he singing about? Question number eight. Now I'm quite partial to these. Made by Walkers, which crunchy snack is also the name of a musical note? So made by walkers, which crunchy snack is also the name of a musical note? Ooh, two questions to go this afternoon. Question number nine. What name is given to the units of weight for calculating the value of a diamond? So what name is given to the units of weight for calculating the value of a diamond. And lastly, number 10, last question today. The Americans call it an eggplant, but what do we call it over here? We've got our own name for it. Americans call it an eggplant, but what do we call this vegetable? So those are all your questions. We've answered half of them. So what I'll do, I'll just go back to round number four and we'll just go through the answers. I hope you're enjoying it today. 
I hope you got quite a few right. Well, in fact, I hope you got them all right. But if you haven't, it doesn't matter. As long as you're enjoying yourself. That's the important thing. So we're going back to round number four, which was only. So, first question. Answer number one. Nicholas Breakspeare was the only British person to hold which office? Well, he was a pope. He was the only British pope. Number two, who was the only female Womble to appear in, on the television series? Well, that was Madame Cholet. Number three, that television show's theme tune, the following lyrics came from. Stick a pony in me pocket, I'll fetch the suitcase from the van. Because if you want the best ones, but you don't ask questions, then brother, I'm your man. Well, it's Dollboy and Rodders, only fools and horses. Number four, the only river in the world that runs through four capital cities. Well, it runs through Belgrade. Bratislava, Budapest and Vienna. It's the River Danube. That is definitely on my bucket list. I've got to go down there and just have a look around. So much history to be found along that river. <clears throat> Number five. For the only time in its history, and it happened in 1969, France, Spain, Netherlands and the UK were joint winners of which competition? Well, we call ourselves the UK. In this competition, they call us the Wyo Umani. Pardon my uh, bad French there. It's Eurovision. Eurovision. And just in case you're wondering, because I know you will, our entry was uh, Lulu and boom, bang a bang. Number six in Greek mythology, when Pandora opened the box and all the evils and illnesses came out, what was the only thing left inside? Well, it was hope. That was the only thing left. Number seven, which company had that tagline, only blank can do this because it reaches the parts other beers cannot reach? Well, that's Heineken. And the title of that Roy Orbison's song, question number eight, only the lonely. And number nine, the only city in the world to sit on two continents, that's Istanbul. It's weird, you get on the, you know, like uh, if you go on the underground in Manchester or London or any big city, you get off, you get on and you get off. But in Istanbul, you can get on the underground in uh, Europe and you can get off it in Asia. It's crazy when you think about it. And number 10, who was the only British monarch in the 20th century to abdicate the throne? Well, that's Edward VIII, Edward VIII. And just a reminder, uh, Istanbul was the answer to question number nine. We then came to round number five, which was all about English towns and cities. So question number one, who played Dirty Den in EastEnders? Which actor? It was Leslie Grantham. Question number two, the American president assassinated in 1865 was Abraham Lincoln. That grass-grown crop, number three, which is a member of the wheat group and is closely related to barley. It's used for making uh, flour, bread, beer, crisp breads and some whiskies. Well, that is rye, little town on the south coast of England. Number four, the name given to the slope that starts in the middle of a road and slopes down towards the gutter to let the rain run towards the drains. Well, that's a camber. It's just along the road from rye. Number five, who played the first record on Radio One when it was launched back in 1967? It was Tony Blackburn. And I know you'll only wonder, it was Flowers in the Rain by the Move was the record. But Tony Blackburn is the answer I was looking for. Question number six, uh, what is the only place in England that has an exclamation mark in its name? Handy if you live there, it's Westwood Ho. Westwood Ho. Number seven, that railway station that opened in 1840, it's called Temple Meads, it's in Bristol. Number eight, from which English city did the Titanic leave on her only voyage? Well, the Titanic, built in Belfast, registered in Liverpool, but it actually sailed from Southampton. Number nine, which American singer had UK hit songs with Circle in the Sand and We Want the Same Thing? Belinda Carlisle. And number 10, that name given to a football match that involves two teams playing each other from the same city. It is a derby. And the last round that we had today was things you can eat. First question was, which seafood, seafood, let's try it again. Which seafood is also the name of a ticket on the London Underground system? It's an oyster, oyster. Number two, Cavendish, Sapper and Ladyfinger are all types of bananas. Opened in 2003, the unusual shape building in London, officially called 30 St. Mary Axe. What do we call it? Well, it's unofficially known as the Gherkin. Number four, what name is given to the amount of money put down as a bet? Well, that's a stake. Number five, Philo, Shoe, 
Flaky and Puff are all types of pastries. Winston Churchill's wife shares her name, her first name, with which fruit? It's a clementine. Clementine. Number seven. What type of beret was Prince singing about on his 1980s hit record? Well, it's a raspberry beret. Apparently you can buy it in a second-hand store. Number eight. Made by Walkers, which crunchy snack is also the name of a musical note? Was Quavers. I just wonder what happened if you'd had eaten half of one. Would you have a semi-quaver? I think we'd better move on. Number nine. What name is given to units of weight to calculate the value of a diamond? Those are carrots. And number 10. The Americans call it an eggplant. But what do we call this vegetable? Well, we call it an aubergine. Aubergine is the last answer today. That is your quiz for today. I really hope you enjoy it. Thank you so much for joining me again. Hope you enjoyed it half as much as I did by putting it together for you. Hopefully uh, we can do it all again another time. I've been Dave Muster. Hopefully I'll be him another day. You look after yourselves, come back and let's do it all again. Enjoy the rest of the village, virtual village hall. Lots of stuff to see on here. Take care and I'll see you again. Bye now.